Hello everybody, my name is Luigi Pinguera, I'm a photographer, designer and sometimes a filmmaker and today in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make your own very icy moon using only textures that we've got that we've taken from my photo camera and this is basically what we're going to create actually I'll put high quality just an icy moon that's going to rotate with some craters and we're going to be using both After Effects to generate a spear and Photoshop to create the textures okay let's begin first we need the texture and so we go to our family friendly Adobe Photoshop and let's create a new document alright um, let's leave the resolution of 72 for now uh, but what we really want to change is change the width and the height. So the width we're going to choose 300 and uh, 3600 and height about 2400. And this is the exact same height and width of an A4 piece of paper turned on its side. And we press OK. Now, the reason why I'm harping on about uh, pixel sizes is because this document this is will be the texture of our planet right of our moon I I see moon and um, but our composition will be 1080 or 720 uh, HD resolution therefore the texture is a lot bigger than our composition and we do this because we want to preserve detail when we go into zooming in or making the uh, the moon or the planet a lot bigger okay uh, let's get some textures okay this is a bunch of textures to, which I took in Europe and in my travels in Australia and let's create some grungy rocky type textures and it doesn't have to be really rocky uh, Byzantine wall let's grab that one and let's drag it onto Photoshop Photoshop will uh, breathe for a bit mm, almost burp then And let's check, let's pick another texture. What can we use? Maybe motor concrete. That looks good. And Photoshop shall bring it. All right. So let's drag Byzantine wall onto our composition and let's reposition it somewhere like here. And let's uh, resize it. I'm clicking on the list box right here. The cursor will change. I'm holding down the shift key and left click. I'm dragging it so it remains to scale. Click this button here so we can commit. Let's minimize that for now. And let's find our other texture, mortar concrete. We're going to drag that onto there. I see my name there. Um, but once we resize it, once again, holding down the shift key so it remains to scale and they've shifted into place and we can commit okay all right uh, let's blend these textures together let's keep the transfer mode to normal and let's change the opacity to something 66 percent see what the feasibility is like Maybe lower it down just a little bit. There you go, 43%. It sort of mixes and blows together. Okay, that's our basic texture, but let's colorize it. Okay, let's create a new fill adjustment layer. And we're going to go to photo filter. And instead of warming filter, let's choose our own color. We want a cold bluish color. Something like that. And light it up a bit. Put some gray. Press OK. And let's change the density for a bit and start to blow it up. And let's make it uniform. So we're going to have to desaturate these two textures. Okay, so we just select it. We go to image, adjustment, desaturate. And we choose desaturate and not um, 
black and white because desaturated is a much more natural look, much more natural grayscale. Mm -hmm. It's making some changes already. Do it this one, the same to the multi one, desaturate. There we go. And let's give it some more highlights. So let's create another fill adjustment layer. Levels. Move the white down to the left, black to the right. And basically you can see now it's starting to pop. The white area is starting to pop. And this will be our quotation marks snow. And the black will be our dips and valleys. Okay. Press OK. All right. Now let's create some. In fact, we can both combine these layers. Select them both. Go to Layer, Merge Layers, and turns it into one texture, which makes it easier for our next step, which is to create some creators. And simply click this layer and let's right click to duplicate layer and let's call this layer to creators and what we want to do is get the eraser tool and we want a hardness of a diameter of 200 less and we want 100 and when we want a hardness of 35%. So we don't want an extra fuzz, we just want a little bit of fuzziness. And what we're going to let's make it a little bit bigger. Uh, let's turn this off for now. Turn our base layer off, and now let's erase parts of the image around the areas like that. Let's make a little bit smaller and erase a little bit smaller. Oh, what am I doing? Change the master diameter, um, make smaller ones around here, and even more smaller ones. I'm pressing the left square bracket to make some smaller ones and something like that okay that looks pretty decent random collection of craters and so now we're going to select our crater layer and we're going to go to layer styles and we're going to go to bevel and emboss And let's change these segments. Let's increase the depth. Oh, that's starting to look nice. Change, change the size. Somewhere like that. Because the light is coming through this way. So, like that. Press OK. And let's reveal the layer underneath. And voila, look at that. <laughs> cool. Little round shaped crater holes. And let's just give the shadows a bit more darkness to them. Just to make them pop out. Oh yeah, 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 look. I'm generally excited when I make these things. Press OK. And there we go. That's how you make craters. Simply by the duplicating the layer. Uh, making a few cuts uh, with the eraser tool. Implying the bevel and boss effect. And revealing the layer underneath. OK. I think this will make a very good base for our texture alright so let's save this out okay uh, we're importing um, our PSD file into After Effects and it's giving us this box here 
It's giving us two options, layer options, edible layer styles, or merge layers onto footage. And for this instance, I'm going to check edible layer styles, because it will be the most accurate representation of what we've worked in Photoshop. Um, for some instances, you may want to merge the layers into footage if it's a really complex scene. And of course, I'm saying that it renders a lot faster. But for now, let's check edible layer styles. Okay, now it's shown up in our project bin. Let's create a new composition. And let's have a 1920 by 1080. 69 1080 HD file. Let's call this uh, created moon scene. Press OK. And uh, here's some stars I generated earlier. We're going to drag it onto there. And it gives us a nice starry background. And we're going to get our created icy moon. I'm just going to drag it on top of the HD stars. And because we set it in Photoshop to be bigger than a 1080 composition, it's actually taking a lot wider of the screen. But that will work to our advantage. So we need to look for an effect, and it's called CC Spear. And we're going to drag this effect directly onto the Crazy Iced Moon composition. And it's created our icy moon. Let's give it some more full detail so we can see what we've got. And let's, um, let's change the radius a little bit bigger. And uh, let's rotate it on the y-axis till we get something interesting. Ah, you see, there's a s seam. Um, this uh, it's important to notice the seam because what is what CC speed really is doing? It's not creating a full 3D object. It's just creating simulation of it, and it's just wrapping the texture around itself to create the illusion of a spear. So we've got to look out for that seam right there. And I think this looks cool like a bowling ball. And let's animate it. So let's go to about 8 seconds at the end of a comp and we're going to set a stopwatch on the uh, rotation Y axis. And if we go back to zero, zero, let's go backwards and see we can do it just bef just after the seam. Because we, we don't want that ugly seam, otherwise it's going to look fake. And if we scrub through to our timeline, our moon is rotating on its axis. Cool. And there are different things you can play around with. You can play around with the light, the light direction. Oh, that looks better. The light height. Uh, let's say, create something like that. And let's make the darkness a little bit more dark so we can adjust the ambient for a bit more darkness. Let's get some light like that. And that's basically it. That is how we create an icy cratered moon using Photoshop and After Effects, a basic, basic scene. And um, all that's left to say is thank you very much for watching. I hope this tutorial has been um, helpful in some way or inspired you to create your own projects. You don't have to do exactly as I do it, but just uh, let the techniques I've shown you to inspire yourself to create your own icy created moons. And if you did think this tutorial was informative in some way, please share it on social media or give it a like so we can all help each other create some fantastic stellar art. Thank you very much for watching and good night.